In this tutorial, we're going to look at the tools that we have inside of Google Classroom that can help us provide meaningful feedback on student work. And for this, I'm going to go into my Spanish 2 course. And you can see that I recently posted a new assignment, an essay on why it's important to learn a second language. And I'll click on that. I can see that Jason has already turned that assignment in. And I'll just go ahead and click on his assignment. Now this is a Google Docs assignment, but the feedback tools are similar also in Google Sheets and in Google Slides. So here I can see the student work, which is in this case a five paragraph essay. And then over here on the right, I have a panel. Now sometimes this panel gets in the way. It's a very useful panel with lots of features and tools, but if it ever does get in your way, just click this button here to collapse the panel to move it out of the way. In this case, that's helpful for me as I read this five paragraph essay. And of course, if I need to, I can also zoom out to shrink the document so that it fits on the screen a little easier. So that's an option as well. So now, as I read through this document, let's say I find something particularly good that I want to point out to my students. I can highlight that section just by clicking and dragging. And then I can go up here to the toolbar. You can see across the top, I have what looks like the Google Docs toolbar with all of the typical tools I'm used to seeing. If I want to see the full menus, I can click this button here to make it look even more like Google Docs. And that's basically what this is. It's Google Docs from within Google Classroom. Okay, so if I want to highlight this section for my student to see, after clicking and dragging to select it, I can just go up here and choose the highlight color button and then simply select a color and now that text is highlighted. So maybe that's something that the student should be proud of. It's excellent work. But maybe this is a mistake. Maybe they used a word incorrectly or the word choice just doesn't seem to fit. Once again, I could click and drag to highlight and then I could go up and give it a highlight color. In addition to putting in highlights, you may want to add some comments. Highlights by themselves don't really say that much. So what I can do is I could click and drag to highlight that same text again and then go up here and click the add comment button. If I click that, it lets me add a comment to the student. Okay, so I've typed in a nice comment to go with that highlight and I can just click the comment button to add it to the student's document. So now when I, as the teacher, when I click on that phrase, you can see that the comment pops out to show that this comment goes with that text and that highlight. Now it is possible to also combine the highlight and the text. So here where it says highlight, I can just click and I can click underneath that in the text box and paste in my comment and click reply. So that's another way to do the same kind of thing. Now one of the best feedback features in Google Classroom is the comment bank. And the comment bank is found here in the upper right corner. And to help you see that a little better, I'm going to click this show side panel button and it will pop out and you can see that this comment bank at this point has several comments that I've used in the past and they are pre-entered and ready to be used. So if I find myself using the phrase excelente a lot, instead of typing it every time, I could simply highlight text and then go to the comment bank and I could click to copy to clipboard and then I can add it as a comment to the document. Now, because I have this panel open and because my screen isn't very big, the add comment button is hidden. It's found here in the more button for right now. So there it is and I can click and then paste in the comment from the comment bank and click comment. Now there's an even faster way to do the same thing. I don't even have to go to the comment bank to add a comment. All I have to do is highlight some text, click to add a new comment, and I get this pop-up where I can type in the new comment, but instead of typing it, I'm just gonna type hashtag S. And if I scroll down the page a little bit, you can see that it brings up two options, stupendous and buenissimo. These are both from my comment bank, but because I typed in hashtag S, it brought them up as options. So I'll just click stupendous, it gets rid of the hashtag, and then I click comment, and that is a super fast way to add comments from the comment bank. Now, how do I add comments to the comment bank? Well, there are two ways to do that. There's the slow way and the fast way. Let's go to the slow way. If I expand this side panel, notice that there's a button there that says add to bank. Maybe I want to add another comment, so I just type it in, click add, 
and there it is in the comment bank. But a faster way to do the same thing is just to start grading and providing feedback. So let's say that the word choice here is lacking. I highlight the text, I go and create a new comment. Your word choice is lacking a bit here. Maybe not specific enough of feedback, but let's go with that. So I click comment. So if I would like to add this brand new comment to the comment bank to easily use in the future, all I have to do is go here and click on the three dots and choose add to comment bank. It gives me a chance to adjust any wording or punctuation, and then I can just click add. And now that brand new phrase has been added to my comment bank. So I find that to be a little faster, a little easier, and more user friendly to just add the comments as they come up in the natural course of grading and providing feedback. Okay, in addition to providing this helpful feedback of highlights, comments, and utilizing the comment bank, there is a button here for grading. And if I expand the panel, you'll see that a little better. Grading, comment bank, back to grading. So at this point, I can give traditional feedback through the form of points or however this assignment is set up for grading. So 92 out of 100 points. Here's the student's comment. And I can add a private response back. And there's my comment. I click post. And now I'm going to click return to send this back to the student, letting Jason know it's graded. I'm done with it, at least for now. When I click return, I get this pop-up. Click return again to confirm. And now Jason, in his account, will receive notice that his assignment has been graded. Let's look at it from Jason's point of view. Here in Jason's Spanish 2 course that he's taking, he can click on classwork. And there's the assignment. Jason can go down and click on the assignment. He's going to be able to see the highlights. And as soon as Jason clicks on that first highlight, this comment moves over, letting him know that this comment applies to that highlight. Moving on to another highlight. And as you know, some of these highlights weren't specifically entered as highlights, but rather as comments. So that is important to know that when you add a comment to a word or a phrase, it does highlight it also automatically. Now, as Jason reviews this feedback, let's say this isn't the final version of this essay. Maybe it's a rough draft. As Jason works through these suggestions and feedback, he can click this check mark to mark it off as resolved and can move through those things one at a time until the essay is perfect and ready to be turned in again. So I hope you can see the advantages of these great built-in feedback tools that can be found in Google Classroom. Hopefully they can help us as educators to provide specific and effective feedback. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this tutorial to be helpful. If you did, please like, follow, and subscribe. And when you do subscribe, click the bell so you'll be notified when I post another video. If you'd like to support my channel, you can do that through my Patreon account. And you'll see a link to that in the description below. Music